Are you looking for a fun and informative podcast all about training working dogs? Look no further than the LWDG Pod Dog. This weekly show is hosted by me, Joanne Parrott, founder of the Ladies Working Dog Group, and I chat to experienced trainers and experts in the field who will give you helpful tips and advice. Whether you're just getting started or you've been working dogs for years, this podcast will have something for you. So pull up a chair, pour yourself a cup of coffee, and tune in to LWDG Pod Dog, and let us help you build a better bond with your best friend. Hello and welcome to another episode of LWDG Pod Dog. This week I'm joined by the amazing group expert, Emma Stevens, and we're going to be talking about how a successful game day relies on everyone. If you've ever been to a well executed shooting day, you'll see the whole thing is carefully choreographed with each role relying on the other to make it successful. From guns in their positions to beaters in the undergrow to pickers up collecting game. Everything coming together really is truly amazing. We're going to talk today about all those different roles, the parts they play, and how working together makes a fantastic day for everyone. So before we start, let's introduce Emma. How are you today, Emma? I'm good, thank you, Joe. How are you? Um, I'm very excited to be talking to you about this because on the days that I do manage to get out, um, I enjoy a good day's beating. And I Although all those areas sort of work together, there is very much a feeling you're part of a part of the team. So I want to talk about, even though you may feel on your first day you're part of part of a team, what all the other parts do and how it really is a team effort. So before we start, can you tell people who have never been out on a game day, what is a game shooting day about? Okay, so a game day, um, we'll talk about a driven day. Um, So this is where birds are driven towards guns. um, And you've usually got four four major key teams involved in this big team of it it happening. And it takes all of them to kind of pull it off. Everybody's got to do their own job within their job um, to pull it off all together, as as you said, Joe. So um, a shoot day will look like um, you'll probably meet in the morning, the guns won't be with you. So the people shooting that day, they're called the guns. They won't be with you. So you'll probably meet just the beaters and the pickers up and the and the gamekeeper. Um, the beaters before even the guns arrive will probably hop onto a onto a beaters bus of some description and, and off they they trot to the to the drive. Um, and then the pickers up will wait and they'll follow the guns and then they'll put themselves appropriately out based on where the guns are being put out. Um, you'll do maybe between three and five drives, depending on how big the day is. You'll be stopped for kind of 11sies and lunch, maybe, or you might shoot all the way through with with little breaks in between. Um, so yeah that's basically kind of what a day looks like um and each of those job roles you may not even see each other the beaters tend to finish their drive they may sort of see the guns being put back in slips and and them going back off for a drink and they may see some dogs working from from a picking up point of view but they'll be jumping back on the beaters bus to get to the next drive so that they can start pushing birds into the right places before the guns get there because ideally you don't want the guns sat on peg for long periods of time waiting for birds to fly over them there is this sort of <clears throat> constant mass movement of, of of groups of people to different areas and I think it almost adds to the energy but you're quite right you are all working frantically through the day so there isn't a lot of time to chat really is there you are literally going off to do the next drive or setting yourself up for the next drive yeah I think probably the beat is the most are kind of pushed on to the next bits um a little bit more um because obviously they've got to get quite far away to be able to push birds in it depends obviously on the size of your shoot but they may be um going maybe even like a mile away before they actually get dropped off and start pushing blanking birds in it's called um into the into the more crucial areas before the guns even get to pegs guns tend to have a little bit more of a social aspect to the day they'll stop in between drives and have drinks while beaters and pickers up do their jobs um which actually is quite helpful if you are working on the shoot not shooting um because obviously you need that time and if you've got guns 
pressuring you You, you're going to be trying to do it quicker so it's quite nice that they get to stop the beaters bus obviously has a a massive morale in the beaters bus that's that's known for its kind of um, camaraderie and things like that um and then the pickers up once is is a more solid solidarity role um but you will get times once if, if you're picking up together and you're sweeping an area together, you'll you'll be you'll be talking to each other there. We normally have radios where we are as well. So the pickers up can communicate with each other because we might not be in places we can see stuff. Um, so but that is more of a kind of on your own job role when you're actually out working your dogs on your own. Now, for me, going to watch the dogs um, is probably my not my one and only reason for doing it. But I, I love to watch the dogs hunt. And. I don't think until we sort of like started preparing for this this podcast, I'd really thought in depth of the role of the gun. So talk to us a little bit more of like the role of a gun on a shoot day. You know, what what is it? What is it they've got to do? And what are the things that they've sort of been putting into into the day beforehand? Thinking things like practice and safety measures. Yeah, so obviously a, a gun turning up for a, for a day shooting um, will, one, need a licence. Um, so they'll have had to apply for a licence from the police. Um, they come and do an interview at your house. They look around your house. They check your cabinet, all of that kind of stuff. So you will have had to have had all of those safety checks done um, before you even are given a gun. Um, they will have obviously done lessons, so clay, clay shooting lessons and things like that before they, they start on game. Um, and they'll also need their own insurance as well. So their own individual insurance to be on that day. So the shoot will be insured for running a shooting day, but also each individual gun will ex- be expected to have their own insurance as well um, for handling the, the, the weapon on the, on the shoot day. Um, on the actual day, there's so much safety involved from the guns for obviously just for safety reasons but also for like sporting reasons as well so there's there's massive amounts of etiquette so you shouldn't shoot somebody else's bird on the next peg um you shouldn't shoot a bird too low you should know where the beaters are coming from so the person putting (coughs) excuse me the person putting the 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 guns out on peg um they will walk all of the guns down the line and and pop them onto their peg numbers that they're they're meant to be on and that person will be educating the guns at that point where the beaters are coming from where your pickers up are stood so that that gun in in his mind can get right these are safe places to be lifting my gun up to these are not so you'll have somebody on the day that will put the guns out on pegs so they will walk them down the line of where the guns are going to be shooting and they'll put them on a peg each peg will have a number and they'll be put on that number um what they'll be doing at the same time is they'll be telling the guns where the beaters are coming from where the pickers up are going to be stood um and this this bit is for the element of safety really so that obviously the guns aren't pointing towards uh beaters coming over hills or pickers up sending dogs for for runners and things like that during the drive um the other thing is is obviously the safety element of if they've got a peg dog with them so if they've got a dog with them um and that obviously means that they've got that dog sat next to them the whole time and they need to obviously make sure that when they're loading and closing their gun and things like that, it's not pointing at the dog. So there'll be an element of safety from that point of view. And there'll also be um, some shoots are what we call live on peg. So the minute they get on peg and their gun is out and loaded, they can start shooting, even if the other guns aren't necessarily out yet as well. So that, again, they'll have safety measures. They'll have to be constantly looking around. They'll have to have some level of experience to know what is expected of them. Um, And then some other shoots will have a whistle to say you're live on peg and you can start shooting and a whistle to stop it as well. So it's all of those little things that they'll need to know about um, before they even start being able to actually go on a pheasant shoot or a, or a partridge or even grouse or anything like that there'll be this this level of etiquette and this level of safety to be able to actually shoot and the reality is the sort of guns can make or break a day can't they because if you've done a real slog of a drive as a beater and your guns are are not accurate or they haven't been practicing or they're not allowing for the wind or things like that you could end up doing a huge drive for very little and then there's very little for pickers up so it really is about them being on their game yeah I mean you 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 have to have good shooters uh 
like they have to be good. The guns have to be good um, to be able to pick the birds that they you want guns that actually pick the birds that they want to be shooting. You want them to be nice and not too high that you're going to injure them and make more work for the pickers up with loads of runners, because obviously that's not good um, from a welfare point of view. We don't want loads of live game, live injured game. Um, you want those clean shots that that produce dead birds um but equally you don't want the you want to preserve the meat as well the idea obviously of this is that the the birds are used they go into the food chain um they maybe produce dog food they go to restaurants and stuff like that so birds that are too low the lead that that hits them means that they're the bruised bruised muscle and things like that so you, you don't want that either so they have to obviously have that level of understanding of what is too high and out of their capability as a gun, but equally what's too low and is going to actually damage the, the quarry that they're shooting. And guns, well, I'd like to think most of the guns, if not all the guns, they have to have an etiquette around the respect for the work the beaters do and the work the pickers up do as well, don't they? They can't believe that because they're there, because they're paying for it, they, they aren't needed to be polite and courteous to the people who get the birds in front of them no the rest of the team are not are not their staff we're we're producing a day for them but we're not necessarily there to serve them if that makes sense um we without the beaters or the pickers up they can't do their job either so they need us as much as we need them to produce that produce the day yes they're paying and sometimes quite substantial amounts of money and they may have other support staff, which I know we're going to come on to later, um, that are there for them for that day. But the beaters and the pickers up are there to produce the day, but we're not there to work for them. Absolutely. And when we're talking there, if we go on now to look after all of the beater, explain why they are so important to the shoot day, as everyone else is, but why they're so important and what it is they do. You know, we talked about a little bit briefly about being a mile away, dropped off from a bus. Explain to the listener what will happen then. So they will, um, they usually set off obviously way before the, the guns are ready anyway. And what they'll do is they'll start with the boundary of, of that particular drive. So they'll go as far back as the gamekeeper feels is necessary, where he knows where his birds are. Um, and they'll drop teams off um, to kind of almost form, if you imagine, like a C shape. And if you drew a line on the edge of that seat and maybe make a D, let's say, um, that's your line of your guns. And the other, all of the C are the, these beaters and they'll be coming in from a really, really far away. And they'll be initially what's called blanking in. So they'll be pushing birds that are onto the boundaries or far away from the main drive and pushing them into this main drive. And that obviously requires a good level of fitness um, a good level of kind of understanding terrain and knowing kind of where you are. So map reading a little bit, um, being able to communicate with your team because you won't be able to see them. So through radios and through shouting, um, a little bit of multitasking, working a dog, maybe flagging, maybe clapping, maybe making noise. Um, and you'll be pressuring these birds. The idea at this point is not actually to fly them because uh, pheasants only have really one good flight in them. And obviously we want that flight to be over the guns. So you don't want them flying at this point. It's gentle pressure, walking birds in kind of almost if you imagine we were herding sheep at this point, we're herding sheep towards a gateway um, and the gateway is the gun line. Um, so you'll be coming in from all angles, communicating. The gamekeeper will be reading what's going on. So he'll be putting a position where he can see the majority of what's going on. Um, and then he'll have trusted people that know the shoot and know the drives on almost each flank and each line so that he can communicate with them and then they can communicate with their own line in their team as well so lots of coordination lots of people kind of trying to be involved and and being able to communicate where they are and what they're doing and knowing the landscape because you can't at that point just say I'm near the tree am I in the right place um because there'll be loads of trees so you need to be able to understand how to and some at some point I know beaters that know like tree um like different trees and things like that so they'll be able to tell them that they're near the ash tree or they're near the big willow or they're near the sty and everybody in the beating line almost needs to know where that person is to be able to go right you're in the right place just hang fire for five minutes we'll all be there in a sec or actually no you've gone too far just wait there we'll, we'll catch you guys up so 
it's all an element of that because if you've got one line working not at the right time of the other line you'll be pushing birds the wrong way um they're very easily pressured birds are so it takes all of these kind of flanks and lines um to, to work together to be able to push the birds in, into the drive and that's before we even get to the main drive so once you're then in the main drive um you may be required to it may be just tapping at that point because we're pushing birds maybe the wind's changed and we need to push them a different way so again there'll be loads of communication loads of one line moving and one line in an attic or you might all be putting gentle pressure on together and this is where you'll start to go right i'm in the right place because you should start hearing guns at that point start shooting and that means you're pushing birds the right way and that's when the keeper kind of relaxes um, a little bit because it's like right we're going the right way we can keep going and keep pressuring birds going over the, over the guns properly at that point then also the person that put the guns out on pegs will be communicating with the keeper to tell them that some guns aren't getting as much shooting maybe as the other guns so then he'll adjust his line accordingly to start pushing birds evenly over all of the guns so that all of the guns get adequate shooting and, and enough shooting and that's kind of when you start getting bent into flush points and things like that um you may be required to either be working your dog or the keeper might say right all dogs back now we'll just put gentle pressure on we don't want massive flushes we want nice gentle flushes of birds going over guns because obviously guns have only got two shots in a shotgun um so if you flush loads of birds over them they're not going to get their shooting because they're only going to have those initial two shots and then they're going to have to load again so you want nice gentle flushes um over, over a period of time depending on obviously how big the shoot is it will depend on how long that goes on for and for the beaters, like you said, right at the beginning, when they are a mile away, you really, you may not really be able to see anyone at all. And you are working, if you think of the sea you just discussed, like a load of sheep dogs coming in and just trying to make sure that you're all like coming in at the same time. You're not leaving gaps. You're not pushing one side more than the other. And so for beaters, yes, you definitely work loads, loads as an actual team of beaters. But we also have to be taking in mind or bearing in mind, like you said, are the birds getting over all of the guns? Are we doing our job correctly? Yeah, and that will be down to the, the keeper will be the person that's kind of like your team leader. And then he'll have delegated to like two or three other mini team leaders that will have like mini teams um, of your beaters and they'll take each sections and then they'll be communicating with each other and the keeper as to where they're pushing and where they are and what they're doing. But it takes a little bit also of initiative. Like you, you've got to be like in your head when I, when I get put out on a, on a place to start, the first thing I ask is right, where are the guns in my general direction? Because then I know I'm heading in that direction. That's, that's the end point that I need to be in. Then I can go, right, it's not going to maybe be a straight line at that point. But in my head, I've started to kind of map out the route that I'm going to take to get to that point. And then my next question is who's on my left and who's on my right? So that I know, even if I can't see them right now, at some point, I should be seeing those people. And if I'm not seeing those people, then we've got a problem. Either they're in the wrong place or I'm in the wrong place. So those sorts of questions, if you're starting out as a beta, need to be the, the, the real questions that you ask initially as you get off the bus. Who's on my left? Who's on my right? Which direction am I going in? And then the rest of it can kind of be a little bit of initiative listening to the radio so if they've got enough radios but you don't feel comfortable talking on them just still ask for one just so that you can hear what's going on so that you can start to kind of build up a mental picture of right that's not even my line but I know where they are and I know where they're coming in from and I know what they're going to be doing and once they've done their job it's then going to be us moving to do our job so you can start to sort of prep yourself a little bit and then really as a beta, you need to be looking 30 to 40 yards ahead of you at all times. Or if you've got a dog in front of you, 30 to 40 yards ahead of them and then start listening. So listening for if we're making noise or are we quiet at this point? Are the guns going off? So are we then stationary or are we going to be about to be told to be stationary? And then am I hearing guns? Are they are they shooting? at that point a keeper or my little mini team leader is going to say right we need to stop now let them reload and then we'll start flushing birds again so it's important that those little tips and bits of initiative you're able to bring as a beta because it makes you an easier beta to manage as a mini team leader or a gamekeeper fantastic so we've talked there about the role of the beta and we've looked at the role of the gun on a shooting day, what is the role of the pickers up? Now we can say, yes, pick, pick the birds up. Uh, we can make it very simplistic, 
But there is more to it than that, isn't it? Yeah, it can be quite complicated. I know, uh, like it's often said that, oh, who's more important, beaters or pickers up? And to be honest, job role and from a dog training point of view, they both need as much as each other, if I'm being totally honest. Um, Doing both job roles with two separate teams of dogs, they need as much training as as each other. Um, The pickers up, Yes, it's often seen as a slightly more glamorous role um, because you get to drive in your car. You don't get dragged through bushes necessarily um, and you get slightly longer breaks and things like that. But again, like I said at the start, it, it's quite um, a, you're on your own a little bit. So it's it can be quite a lonely role. Um, and again, if you're not a confident handler of your dog, you can then start second guessing yourself when you're sat there going, do I send my dog? Do I not send my dog? What's the, what's the etiquette here? Do What am I doing? So you do need to be a little bit more aware of what's expected of a picker up. I think when you go into that job role of any such, whereas a beta, you can kind of be carried with the team a little bit. They can help and support you. You've got people either side of you going, yeah, yeah, put your dog in there or don't put your dog in there. So you you need to be very kind of self-confident, I think, to be a picker up, to know what, what is going to be expected and what's not going to get you into trouble. Um, so the job role of a picker up is that they stand behind the guns, varying distances, depending on where the birds are going to fly, where they're going to be landing, whether you're doing the next drive next and things like what, what drive you're doing next so that you can't pick up in certain areas and things like that. So again, you're going to have to be aware. Usually you have a head picker up. Um, so there's one person that will put the rest of the pickers up in places. He will be talking and communicating with the keeper the whole day, knowing what drives you're doing. So he'll be able to go, right, Emma, put your back up against this fence. And I want you back up against this fence because you can only pick up forward. You can't pick up backwards behind this fence. We're going to do next or it's not our land. We can't use it and stuff like that. So that type of person will help you. Um, and then when you're actually stood there, um, generally speaking and I'm going to generalize most shoots it's no picking up through the drive and it's only picking runners which are injured or wounded birds that have been shot and not landed dead straight away um they will be the only ones that you send for um but they need to be a safe distance so one you need the trust in your dog and two they need to be a safe distance away from the gun line because what you don't want is worst case scenario dog runs straight down towards the gun line picks this runner gun starts shooting again drops the runner starts running around the gun line really not good etiquette at all they could end up pushing birds the wrong way back over the beater's head at that point as well um just because it's a live live dog running around um really off-putting for the guns obviously we said that they need to be aware of safety and things like that to be able to shoot properly and safely a gun running around their feet swapping birds annoying their peg dog all of that kind of stuff is just really not not good etiquette at all whatsoever so that's really frowned upon so from a training point of view you're you're picking up dogs um it's a job role that you can only do with dogs You, you can beat without a dog but you can't pick up without a dog um they need to be steady they need to obviously be introduced to shot and game because they'll be expected to to carry it they need to be soft mouth because you don't want to injure them the meat um and they need to be very, very controllable. You need to know confidently that when you are sending your dog for that runner, that is its channel tunnel vision. It is literally going straight for that runner and straight back to you with minimal handling. And that that takes confidence, skill and time to, to train that. After that, it kind of looks like organized chaos. So after that whistle goes and the gun stops shooting and they put their slips back in and they go off for their drink or they might send their peg dog for a couple of birds. Um, the pickers up will be expected to do something called sweeping um so that is where they are self-hunting for the shot birds to pick and come back they may obviously find the odd runner that that was maybe missed at that point as well um and then from a picking up point of view it's important to then be watching where your dogs are going so that they don't go into obviously the places that you were told not to go um they're picking birds they're choosing to come back to you because you might not be able to see them so no recall whistle at this point they are self-hunting um and then obviously you need to know how to dispatch birds effectively and quickly to be able to for welfare reasons and then obviously it's the role of the pickers up to make sure all the quarry is back on the game cart sorted you know the it's it's a quite um a laborious task carrying um, an amount of dead birds so there's all that for them to do as well, isn't there? 
Yeah, so obviously physical fitness, even though we're maybe we're driving and we're not walking as far, um, weight training is definitely, definitely a thing. Um, and yeah, we'll be expected to make sure that we have picked as much as we physically can, if not everything. Um, you may, some some shoots will have guns come up and talk to you and say, oh, I hit a bird over here. Did you get it? And obviously, so you, you'll be expected to, to be able to talk to the guns as well. Um, and then obviously, like you said, get get the birds down to the game cart and then you maybe even be asked to help tie up game if if it's been a busy drive and, and pop them onto the game cart or you might ha- not have a designated person on the game cart and it's kind of the head picker up or something that that's moving the game about and things and in some circumstances the picker up might be sort of providing moral support for a gun because you know guns can be spread out quite widely can't they yeah, I mean, sometimes I've I've been on days where as a picker up, I've only had one gun with me. Um, some shoots will have walking guns. So they'll walk from a certain place just because of like maybe early birds will break in a certain place, but it's not it's not worth putting a gun stationary on peg. But they'll be able to they'll start at A and then they'll walk to their peg, but they'll be live shooting at the same time and you've got to follow them as as, as the sole picker up. Um, equally from an etiquette point of view, the pickers up have to allow peg dogs to work first. Um, and then, so you'll still pick runners through the drive, but then the peg dogs will be allowed to pick whatever the gun sees fit and then they'll go off and and go and have their drink and you'll be able to sweep up after them. Depending on obviously your day, you may be expected to pick up cartridges down by pegs or, or not. Some guns pick their own cartridges up. Some, some of the more commercial shoots will have people that pick cartridges up off the floor for them as well. Um, so it's just our role basically to make sure as a picker up that you you get everything done and tidied up after that drive finishes and then you follow on the guns to the next drive. We've talked about, you know, sort of what was probably be seen as three of the main roles, but we haven't yet talked about probably the the main role, which is the role of the gamekeeper. We talk about a shoot day, which might be the one day we are there. What is the role of the gamekeeper on shoot day? But what is the role of the gamekeeper on the days we're not there? So a gamekeeper is obviously the person that keeps the game. Um, So depending on obviously what shoot type you're on, um, they may be employed, they may be um, voluntary, uh, they may be one of the guns taking it in turns if you're on kind of a DIY syndicate or something like that. Um, But if we're talking about an employed gamekeeper um, that lives on site and looks after all of the game on a regular basis, seven days a week, they will be expected to birds arrive kind of mid mid July ish, maybe earlier. Um, and from that, they'll be expected to be feeding them in certain places as the birds get older and they start to wander out of pens. The keepers will be pushing them with food to different parts of the shoot and spreading them out so that each drive when we come to a shoot day will have the appropriate amount of birds on it and they'll know where they're going to fly to so they're they're aiming usually to fly them back to pens so back to home um which then makes it predictable to put guns in the right places and make sure that birds are going to fly the right height to get them to get the shots um we they will feed then all the way through the year so they'll feed from the minute birds hit the floor um all the way through they'll feed around shoot days as well so either either days over over the shoot days um they'll be expected to do something called dogging in uh which is pushing birds back from those boundaries kind of acting like what the beaters do really early on on a shoot day pushing those birds back in so that they don't go off of the of of the estate and onto neighboring estates or onto neighboring land that isn't isn't part of the shooting estate um they do work very long hours um really really long hours having a husband that is a gamekeeper <laughs> they work really long hours um and they work hard and then on a shoot day they are then expected to pull off days that the guns want it's it is all about what what the guns want at that point um and in that they have to communicate with a lot of people on a shoot day and there's there's a lot of pressure on them to be able to pull off what they pull off um so from a shoot day point of view they'll they'll greet the guns they'll greet the shoot captain in the morning they will then speak to the person putting them out on peg and check that the pegs are all in the right place and discuss what drives they're going to be doing they will then speak to the head picker up 
um, and speak to them. They may then speak to different support staff, loaders, chefs, drivers, game cart people, um, maybe people putting on lunches for them. If the landowner's there, they'll be expected to communicate with the landowner as well. Um, and just make sure that everybody knows what is going on as much as possible. Um, and then throughout the day, obviously, if anything changes, if drives are busier than others, they might go to a quieter drive and things may change and they'll be expected, obviously, to communicate this through to them as well. Ultimately, it's between them and kind of the shoot captain or the landowner as to what drives they're going to be doing and what kind of bag day they want and things like that. And then then they're in the beating line. So they'll be then putting themselves in a place on every drive that they can see as much as physically possible um, so that they know what's going on. And then they'll be relying on the communication of their kind of mini team members to communicate with them as to where they are um, and the topography that they're going over and where they are geographically on the shoot so that they know where everything's going. And then they hope and pray that they start hearing gunshot because <laughs> if they start hearing gunshot, they have done the right thing and they don't have a blank drive, um, which is the worst thing that could possibly happen to a keeper is a blank drive with no shots. Um, and then they'll start hearing from the person that's put the guns out on pegs, whether yes, they've had heard shot, but is it going, is it spreading out? Is it going to plan over all of the guns and then adjusting things accordingly? After the drive's finished, they'll go and speak to the shoot captain, make sure everybody had, or the landowner or who would put them out on peg and make sure that everybody had enough shooting and everybody's okay. Um, and what time frame they're looking at before they start the next drive. They'll then communicate that back to the pickers up who at that point will be deep in the undergrowth, picking up, sending their dogs for all of these birds and let them know roughly kind of what time frame we're looking at before they need to be back at cars and, and getting back on the move to the, to the next drive and what drive they're doing next. The role of the gamekeeper on a shoot day is ultimately entertainment for the guns, but the amount of stress they are under, especially when you're picking up team and normally pretty much well known to you, your beating team could be half a team you've worked with before or half a team you've never seen before, dogs you've never seen before. They are trying to coordinate a large number of people who they have to vouch for, but may not be able to vouch for at that point. Yeah, and equally, like you could have you could have a team of guns that are there on a weekly basis or a fortnightly basis that you know very well, um, and they they come back every week and and you know them. Or it could be a completely different team of guns that it's then relying on your reputation to make sure that they then have a good day. And if they don't have a good day, that could then be a really really bad thing for the shoot and a bad thing for your job as well so it's very much and if you think also most keepers will get houses with their with their jobs as well so the pressure on them to keep their jobs every year relies on also their home as well and maybe their vehicle and their transport and stuff so it is it's a lot of pressure for them for them to go through um and then to pull off a day like you say coordinating so many teams of people together and different personalities and dog abilities and people abilities and, and things is, is really difficult for them to do. So they do have to be um, a really, really good natural leader, I would say, to be a good gamekeeper, as well as actually understanding what's expected from, from the job role as a, as a pheasant keeper. So I think for anyone listening, they now understand. And it was important for us in this podcast to really say no part is better than the other part we are a team and we should be a united team if you want to be part of this overall team on a shooting day what what personality should you bring to the day what should you be open-minded about um so i i tell novice people going out on a shoot day that you're generally going to get to start as a beta even if your end goal is is to pick up for whatever reason um and I would actually say start as a beta. You will you have more support. You have a bigger team around you. Um, you do need to be able to cope with a bit of banter. Um, you need to not take yourself too seriously. Don't stress because when you stress, you handle dogs differently or you handle yourself differently. Um, if you're shouted at, it's finished the minute the horn goes or the whistle goes. So if you're shouted at during a drive, do what they want you to do in the drive obviously and then forget about it it's not going to be you're not going to have a grudge held against you because you were slightly in the wrong place and you were moved very quickly um 
it generally is over as soon as that that is done um and then just have fun like just literally enjoy it like it, it that's that's the reason it's it is there for for everybody to enjoy it and if you're not enjoying it then there's no point you doing it either so it's it's to go and be light-hearted enjoy a day out with your dog or just enjoy a day out day out in the countryside if you don't have a dog um and get to learn what what the incredible lot of team of these people do on on a regular basis i mean some people will pick up or, or be four or five days a week it's it's literally their life in the winter um and to be able to even have a snippet of of what that is 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 just incredible when you see a drive pulled off properly and you get down to the bottom after you finish beating and the guns are have got smiles on their faces there's some peg dogs maybe picking birds and then you start to see the team of pickers up kind of sweeping through you just it's yeah it brings a smile to my face and it should do to everybody I think a smile is what you need from the start of the day to the end isn't it there's going to be bits in the middle when you're like I don't feel like smiling I'm stuck on top of a barbed wire fence which tends to happen to me because I'm like not even five at all um but you just you've just got to smile through it all you know you've just got to think okay every single time I come out I'm learning a little bit more the dog's learning a little bit more good or bad and I'm it is just about not expecting perfection in such a, a big moving mass of people. Yeah, and I think from a from a dog handler point of view, you've done all of the training. Somebody's told you that this dog is ready and you've got to trust a little bit that that dog is ready and then rely on everybody else to kind of carry you a little bit as a novice handler and explain to them look I've never been here before I've never done this before tell me when to put my dog on lead I won't be offended tell me when I can take it off and work it I'm not going to be offended tell me where to put it where to work it um and the same for for picking up as well if you can get an opportunity to stand with a picker up and learn from them to start with even without a dog it just gives you the opportunity to kind of learn your job role without then the pressure of thinking that you're going to mess it up um but yeah definitely sense of humor maybe some alcohol <laughs> um and and the ability to to laugh at yourself if something goes wrong or you get stuck in a ditch somewhere and somebody's got to come and pull you out <laughs> well thank you very much emma for going through that with us today another massively informative uh podcast as always for all of you listening just remember despite we may not all get the exact recognition in the equation Remember, we are all there to have fun and enjoy ourselves, and we are all vital to making it work. Next time you're out, remember, it's teamwork to make the dream work, and the teamwork is all of you working together. So thank you very much for listening, and we hope you have enjoyed. Let us know, send us your comments, send us your feedback, and we look forward to speaking to you all next week. Thank you for listening to LWDG Podzo with me, Joe Parrott. Now we all know training a dog takes time, energy and patience, but our lives can be really, really busy. Don't worry, the LWDG has got you covered. Join us for our free planning workshop where we'll show you how to use short 10 minute training sessions each day to fast forward your dog's education. Our experts have years of experience in training dogs and will help you get started on the right foot. Register now and start making progress with your furry friend today. Go to our Facebook page, The Ladies Working Dog Group, and click on the pinned post, or visit www.thelwdg.com.